Hey guys, this is Austin, and today I'm here with a review of the 2012 MacBook Air 11 inch. I was a big fan of the previous generation Air, and the latest model brings some solid improvements, but are they worth it? Externally, the computer looks nearly identical to the last Air, which isn't a bad thing at all. The build is entirely aluminum, with a wedge shape that gives it one of the thinnest profiles of any laptop you can buy. Best of all, the 11 inch Air is still totally usable, as the keyboard and trackpad are full sized. While the 135 pixel per inch display can't touch the 220 ppi on the Retina MacBook Pro, it remains very good for a laptop of this size. Powering the screen is a Core i5 or Core i7 processor with Intel HD 4000 graphics. As the latest ultra low voltage CPUs from Intel, you'll find that there's plenty of performance while still running cool and being easy on the battery. I won't go too in depth on the performance, but if you're interested in the details, feel free to check out this video I made measuring how fast the Air is and what kind of games it can handle. Just like the last two versions, the MacBook Air comes standard with an SSD. I've talked about what SSDs are all about before, but to sum up quickly, a solid state drive is a collection of chips that replaces a normal spinning hard drive. An SSD is generally more reliable, as there are no moving parts to break, and are around 4-5 to five times faster. In the real world, this means the Air is extremely snappy. The computer boots in just over 13 seconds, and programs fly open much faster than with a mechanical hard drive. For an 11 inch laptop, battery life isn't half bad. With watching a few HD YouTube videos, writing this review in Google Drive, and listening to music, I was able to get just over 5 hours on a charge. One thing that's entirely unchanged from the last Air is the keyboard and trackpad combo. The backlit keyboard is great, bordering on excellent if only it had a bit more travel. The trackpad on the other hand is basically perfect and is right up there with the MacBook Pro as the best trackpads I've ever used. It's large for any computer, but especially for an 11 inch laptop, and the glass surface works very well with the various multi-touch gestures in OS X. Speaking of OS X, as of recording this review, the MacBook Air comes preloaded with 10.7 Lion. If you've used any recent Mac, you'll know what you're getting, however very soon OS 10.8 Mountain Lion will be out. Newer Airs will come preloaded with this, but if you buy one with Lion, you'll get a free upgrade once it's available. There are some slight changes with the ports. On the left side you'll find MagSafe 2 for charging, which works exactly the same as before, but with a new, thinner magnetic connector. Beside that is a USB 3.0 port, and there's also the headphone jack and a microphone. On the right side is the Thunderbolt port that doubles as a mini display port along with your second USB 3.0. I mostly use the Air as a portable video production machine and it works well here. Obviously you wouldn't want to spend all day using After Effects on it, but it can absolutely handle a decent amount of editing. Another thing that's very important to me is how quiet it runs, as the Air is usually how I record my audio. The last gen kicked the fan up pretty quickly, however thankfully the new Air with the Core i5 stays silent for much longer, the fan only firing up audibly when doing heavy lifting. You can order the Air with quite a few options. The basic configuration costs $1000 for 4GB of RAM, a Core i5, and 64GB SSD. $100 more will get you 128GB of storage, and another $100 will double your RAM to 8GB, which is the Air I'm using now. You can also order a Core i7 for an additional $150, and bump the SSD up to 256GB or 512GB for $300 and $800 respectively. The options you choose are up to you, but one important thing to keep in mind is that you really can't upgrade the laptop after you buy it. The RAM is completely non-removable, and the SSD uses a special connector, so it's best to get any upgrades up front. You can always want more in products, and the Air is no exception. While the extreme thinness is great, I would gladly trade a few millimeters for an included SD card reader and another USB port. The battery life is solid but nothing spectacular, and while it's more than fast enough for 98% of users, having a bit more power can make editing better and gaming more viable. All that said, the MacBook Air is a fantastic computer. The size is perfect for me, the keyboard and trackpad are phenomenal, and with both USB 3.0 and Thunderbolt, you won't like anything for high speed connectivity. With the new Ivy Bridge processors and the option to get 8GB of RAM, my wishlist is steadily disappearing. While it's not a massive upgrade from the last generation, I can easily say that the 2012 MacBook Air remains an excellent choice. If you're interested in more on the MacBook Air, feel free to check out my unboxing, as well as take a look at the gaming performance and speed test here. If you enjoyed, definitely be sure to leave this video a thumbs up, and if you're interested in more videos like this, be sure to subscribe.